In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a standard three drawer base cabinet that's good for your kitchen or pantry. I'll show you how to build the carcass, the face frame, and the drawers. And I've even got plans available that I'll link down in the description below. All right, so there is a lot to do, so let's get going. To begin building the carcass, I need some three quarter inch ply and some quarter inch ply that'll become the back and later the drawer bottoms. And the first thing I need to do is break this plywood down into manageable chunks. I love doing this using one of these centipede work holders with a piece of foam insulation on top. It's a quick and easy way to set up a horizontal work surface that allows me to cut at a comfortable height and not on the floor, which gets old really fast. To break this plywood down, I'm using my track saw. If you have a circular saw, that'll work too. You just need to make sure that you have some kind of straight edge that you can use as a guide for your saw. Once I have all my plywood blanks cut, I can take them over to the table saw to cut them to final dimensions. One of the things I make sure to do is to trim off the rough factory edges so that everything is nice and clean. And after cutting the side panels and bottom panels, I go ahead and cut out a bunch of strips that are gonna end up becoming the stretchers and toe kicks. If you're wondering, I'm making two of these cabinets, which is why I'm cutting so many parts. Next, I need to cut dados into the sides that are going to house the back and bottom panels. To start, I'm making some reference lines on my sides so that I know where to cut my dados in the right orientation. One way to make these dados is to use a router bit. Since the bottom of the cabinet is going to sit just above the toe kick, I'm going to use the toe kick itself to set the distance from the fence. This will ensure a perfect fit with no gap at the bottom of the cabinet and I don't have to measure anything. Each side gets one of these grooves. Then I need to do the same thing, but this time making a quarter inch groove along the back of each side. This groove is going to sit just in front of the stretcher, so again I'm using the stretcher to set the distance to the fence. If you don't have a router table, you can also cut these using a table saw. You can use a set of dado blades, or you can do what I'm doing here and just use a single saw blade and take multiple passes. Once you make the first cut, move the fence a tiny bit and make another pass, sneaking up on the cut until your plywood fits perfectly into the dado. The next step is to cut a notch out at the bottom corner and this is going to be where the toe kick goes. My favorite way to do this is using my bandsaw. I set my fence to my first mark and cut until I reach the depth that I want. And to mark that depth, I'm going to use a mag switch as a positive stop. This is a great way to make sure that all your cuts are repeatable so that your parts end up the same. If you don't have a bandsaw, you can also cut these using a jigsaw and a square for a guide. I can just clamp everything down and carefully run the jigsaw across the square. If you use a fine tooth blade, your jigsaw is going to produce a really nice clean cut on the plywood. All right, with that, these sides are done and it's time to build the carcasses. I'm going to use pocket screws as the primary joinery and so I need to cut pocket holes on all the stretchers. In my opinion, cabinet construction is the perfect application for pocket holes. They're plenty strong even without glue and make building the cabinets quick and easy. All right, to get started building the carcass, I'm gonna add some glue to this bottom dado. This is the only place I need to add glue because I'm not gonna be using screws here. I slide the bottom panel into the dado and do the same thing on the other side before adding clamps. And the next thing I'm gonna do is add the back stretchers. Once one of the stretchers is in place, I clamp the heck out of it so that it doesn't move and screw it into place. I then do the same for the lower stretcher on the back. I then flip the cabinet on its top to add two more stretchers. And on the back stretcher here, I'm using a scrap of quarter inch ply as a spacer representing the back of the cabinet. I'll show you what this looks like and why it matters in just a minute. And these get screwed into place as well. I then flip the cabinet again, which will let me install the drawer dividers. Here, I'm using two scraps of ply to act as spacers. I can just clamp the drawer divider to the top stretcher like this before screwing it into place. I then repeat that process using a second longer set of spacers, which is going to make the room needed for the bigger size drawers at the bottom of the cabinet. After that, yep, you guessed it, another flip. I need to install the toe kick. And yes, the pocket holes are showing on the front of this, but that's going to be okay because this is going to end up being covered with a piece of trim when I install the cabinets. And here we go again with another flip. This is where I need to slide the back panel into the slot that I made using that quarter inch plywood spacer earlier. This was a pretty tight fit, so I needed to get the old persuader out to tap it into place. And one last flip for good measure, and we have ourselves a cabinet carcass. Now let's make some drawers for it. For the drawers, I'm using solid maple. 5 8 inch Baltic birch ply also make really nice drawer boxes, and they take less work to make, but since all my kitchen drawers are maple, I'm going to use that to make them match. I then cut all the parts to final length at the miter saw before setting up to cut the grooves that are going to hold the drawer bottoms. I like using setup blocks to set the distance from the fence as well as the depth of cut. 
So this is really easy. I just go ahead and make the first cut on all my parts and then I move the fence out one width of the blade and make the second pass. The drawer bottom should have a nice snug fit like this. Now I'm gonna sand all my parts, which is way easier to do now than once the drawers are assembled. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add two coats of a clear finish. The finish I like to use on maple is called High Performance from General Finishes. It's a water-based finish that doesn't yellow the maple at all. It's a super clean finish and really durable. Okay, to assemble your drawer, lay out all your parts with the grooves facing out. Your front and back parts will have the pocket holes in them and the sides will not. Arrange the parts so that the front and back sit inside the sides and clamp them together, making sure that the dados line up all the way around the drawer. Then screw everything together securely using pocket screws. When you're using pocket screws, make sure to really clamp down on the joint. Pocket hole joinery has a tendency to move on you right at the last second if you're not careful. All right, since my back panels were so tight, I decided to chamfer the edges of my drawer bottoms to help them slide in a bit easier. You can see that the drawer bottom slides into these grooves from the back. <laughs> well, slide is a subjective term. Because the bigger drawers will potentially be holding heavier kitchen items, I'm going to go ahead and screw them in instead of using brad nails. This is going to help prevent the bottoms from bowing over time under the weight. And just like that, all the drawers are assembled. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I also need to cut some more maple to make the face frames as well as the drawer fronts. After cutting all the drawer parts to length, I'm going to cut a quarter inch groove down one side of each piece. This is where the center panel is going to go. I then need to cut a tongue or tenon on the ends of the top and bottom frame pieces. These will be used to connect the frame together. To do this, I'm using a special jig called a tenoning jig. It attaches to the auxiliary fence of my table saw. Basically, it allows me to make vertical cuts safely and accurately. And this is what the tenon looks like. Isn't that awesome? And I made it all on the table saw. To begin building the drawer front, I add glue to the tongues and insert them into the grooves on the frame sides. I can then slide a center panel into place like this. Then I can add the final frame piece with more glue and tap everything into place and clamp it together. Normally for the center panel, I like to use half inch plywood and cut a rabbit around all four sides to fit into these grooves and give it a nice flush back, but I don't have any half inch ply right now. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead and glue a second piece of quarter inch ply into the back recess and create that nice flush back so that I can fasten these drawer fronts to the drawers. Once the fronts are out of the clamps, I go ahead and give everything a once over with the sander to clean up the glue joints and get them ready for finishing. To make the face frame, I'm gonna assemble everything together with pocket screws and glue. I dab a little glue onto the ends and slide them into place. I then add some spacers to create the first drawer opening. I can then go ahead and add a second frame part and another set of spacers and well, you get the idea. As you can see, I'm running out of room on my assembly table, so I'm gonna go ahead and clamp everything now and screw it all together. I prep these frames for finish by sanding them as well. I'm painting these white along with the drawer fronts, but I'm gonna save my painting process for another video. So let's magically fast forward and now it's time to fasten the face frame to the carcass using glue. Since a face frame is just a decorative piece, glue is all you really need here. I would not bother with pin nails that you're gonna to have to go back and fill and paint over again. It's just not worth the hassle. And while that glue up dries, let's go ahead and talk about drawer slides. For these cabinets, I'm using undermount slides for their clean hidden look and ease of adjustment. But I think a lot of people get intimidated by them and I wanna show you how easy this process actually is. The first thing you need to know is about this little pin that's at the back of each slide. This needs to slide into a hole that you drill in the back of the drawer. So the question is, how do you know where to put that hole? Well, you could spend some money and buy a little jig that will locate exactly where that hole goes, or you can do it like this. Just line up the drawer slide in the place that it would be on the side of the cabinet and jam that little pin into the drawer back. Now you know exactly where the hole goes. Keep it simple. The next part of installing undermount slides are these little clip thingies that go under the front of the drawer. They just screw into the front of the drawer like this. You may also have to cut a pair of notches out of the back of the drawer to make a place for the slides to go. But if you build your drawers the way I just showed you, then the back of the drawer doesn't go all the way down and you don't need to cut out this notch so you can just skip this step entirely. To install these slides into the cabinet, I get myself a scrap piece of plywood that is cut to match the height of my first set of slides on the top of the cabinet. I then rest my slide on top of that and screw it into place. I repeat the same process on the opposite side. Then I take my scrap plywood and cut it down to match the height of the next set of slides. I then install those slides the same way. 
For the bottom slides, my spacer is just a quarter inch scrap of plywood. The drawers install by setting them over the two sliding arms and clicking them into the clips. Hear that sound? And that's it. I can slide all my drawers into place and we really have something that's starting to look like a cabinet. All right, the last detail we need to attend to is hardware. I need to drill the holes for the drawer pulls and I'm using this really cool jig to do it. It has adjustable stops to help you line up the drill guide along the side and top of the drawer front to perfectly position the pull. This makes adding drawer pulls to multiple drawers fast and repeatable. All right, check this out. To install the drawer fronts, I have a dead simple process. I made this makeshift ledge out of some scrap ply and some two-sided tape. I go ahead and attach that to the frame using the same tape. Now I have this perfect little ledge to rest my first drawer front on so that I can focus on lining it up. Next I put two screws into the holes that I made for the drawer pull and screw them directly into the drawer. This is going to hold the drawer front perfectly in place while I screw it in from the back side. Then I remove those two screws and drill out the holes to make room for the hardware. First drawer done. I then use a 1 8 inch strip of maple as a spacer and I repeat that whole process for the other two drawers. Bam! One cabinet done. 